Hi, Namaskar. Uh, good evening. I'm Dr. Sunil Richardson. So today in this short video, we're going to show you the different equipments that we have, which we use for doing various jaw surgeries here at Richardson's. So without much ado, I'm going to move on to the three instrument kits that we have and that we use generally. I have here with me my staff Kala. She is going to show us how these different instruments are used. I'm also going to explain certain finer points, how a good instrument backing is so much necessary in order to get excellent results for patients consistently. All right, so we move on to the first kit here. So this is a very small motor and uh, it's basically used for making some tiny holes. You can see this, uh, this is a very primitive one. It still has a role to play. Now I've got this uh, attached to a round bird and this is a mastoid bird, but you can see that uh, it works well. So this is good for doing small procedures when I don't have to do a lot of work there's no point getting these big uh, equipments out. So if it's just a little bit of work, then we can always go and get this done. So this is the first thing. And this also comes with a reverse and a positive mode. Anyways, so we move on. The next is the uh, physio dispenser comes of a thing. So we can use this for implant work, for other works, but we also use it for jaw surgery. If you need to use, you can use it. All right, so Kala just show the uh, motor. Yeah, so we have a micro saw attached here. Now, and this is a foot pedal. We have two models. So, and you have saline attached there, which comes. You can see the saline spraying as I press the foot pedal. And you can see the saw vibrating. So, what's basically happening is that the saline gives a coolant. And when I have to make delicate osteotomies, I tend to use this because this blade is very fine and it can bend, you know, it can, it can bend, you see that? It can bend so I can make my osteotomy cuts around uh, curvatures. So I also use uh, this sometimes to make holes for putting screws in. So that's the system. This is the second one. And now I move to the heavy duty one. And that's right here on this side. So. I can I just show the way we're going to use the motor first? All right, so here, what do you have? Okay, so this is one of my favorite burrs and like a workhorse type of a handpiece. The foot control is right here. Is it a round burr or a color? Okay, so saline off, Paneer kya? Okay, so the saline is off now, but I'm gonna show you how this works. This literally cuts bone like butter, literally. There's no exaggeration whatsoever. Absolutely cuts bone like butter. I, I have no, I don't have to exaggerate anything. It just does a bit too much. So you gotta be careful. That's the worry with this. So that's one instrument we have here. And then you can turn the saline on. Obviously this also has a lot of controls. So we can turn the saline on. You see the saline is going on to this one. Okay, now turn the saline off and put on this one. So we have two cords here. So which means I can cut and I can also do the sawing without changing time. Again, a very heavy duty one. This can cut the hand probably in a minute. So this is a very, very heavy duty blade. You can't even bend this easily, see that? So you can show me the other saw that we have. Those are the micro saw blades, which I showed you earlier. And you can see this one bends while this is rigid. But this is good for doing major osteotomies, some osteectomies, sliding it, cutting it. So these instruments help us to do different work in different places. So this is the second one. Now she's going to matter the matter. I'm angled to the India. So she's going to now change the hand pieces and we're going to show you the angled hand piece, the different other kinds of saws that can be used. All right. So this instrumentation uh, well, it's probably not as important with, let's say, rhinoplasty or cleft lip because there it's morely soft tissue work and the instrumentation you need uh, doesn't have to have such a range of uh, procedures that the instrument can do. But with jaw surgery, remember, uh, you're cutting bone, you're shaping it, you're moving it around. And I keep telling my patients that there are three types of things we can do, osteotomy, osteoplasty, osteectomy. 
Osteotomy is cutting the bone in two and then we want to move it or whatever. Osteotomy is cutting and removing it and throwing it out of the body. And osteoplasty is like sculpting it, like shaping it, like shaving it, like molding it. Now different instruments can be used. We need different instruments obviously. So we make the plan and then we have to execute it. And these instruments are really useful. Obviously you need manpower, you need skilled people, but still you need instruments as well. Now we move on to another one. Okay, so there's no saline, good. And you see this is an angled one. And you see I've got another huge bar on this. So I'm sorry, uh, you know, changed on to this one. All right, so we are onto this one now. And you can see this is an angled one. So I can reach areas like the ramus or difficult areas that I otherwise would not be able to reach because of this angle. Also, it's a long one. I also have a hand control, but I'm showing you everything with the left con foot control now. All right, this is another one. And then we have another very good, Matidla. Okay, so yet another type of saw. So you can see how this saw is working. So I can have a small pencil grip and you know literally cut it as I want along the ramus, along the line of mylohert or wherever I want. So this is again a very useful instrument in certain areas where we can use this in order to get fine work. We also have another one. So she's going to put that one up for you. So we can oscillate cut like this. You can cut like that. You can cut like this. You can upgrade it with small one, big one. Put a smaller bird, number 701 or 702. Right, and now you see this one now. So this one cuts in this direction, while the last one was having a pencil grip, so I can go like this. So if I have to go to an area that's like, let's say the posterior part of the ramus, and then this is very useful, because I can go right into the mouth and I can cut perpendicular to the bone. So that's an advantage. Now, this is a very common burr which we use. We also have drill bits. And this is used to make a groove on bone to make the cut before we can actually cut and remove. I like to use these birds quite a lot as well. All right, so these are the basic instrumentation for jaw surgery. We also have a hand control. She's got another one here. So the different hand pieces. And then we also have the cutter yeah this is the foot this is the hand control that comes with that and there are also a bunch of different uh, burrs and everything so we're going to show you the burrs as well so right different sizes of burrs different designs all of these are useful uh, because they all are needed for doing different purposes. All right, and then we also have some micro saws uh, for different directions. You can see these micro saws. So they are uh, saws that are micro, but they can go in different direction, different saw blades from that. This goes with the other instrument. So uh, all of these can be autoclaved. That means it can be sterilized. And we have a bunch of them that are kept as reserve as well because you never know when these things can get conked off and we're not in a very big major Indian city. So we always have lots of extra stock with us. So just in case, all right. So she's fixed it. Now this is, uh, she's put in the safe mode. So it's not gonna work. And then you see that this is hand control. So we can attach this onto the hand pieces also just for sake of comfort. Uh, I don't like to use the hand control much, uh, but then and sometimes we can use it. All right. So the objective of this uh, video uh, is a few things. Uh, many subscribers are having lots of doubts regarding implants. So I've explained that in a couple of videos now. A lot of uh, uh, subscribers, viewers, even doctors are asking me doubts about Doctor, how can you do that? How long does it take to cut bone? What happens to the muscle when you cut bone? Absolutely good question. So we reflect the muscle, cut the bone and put the muscle back. In some patients, if I need to remove part of the muscle, yes, that also gets done and then we put it back. So all of these equipments basically help us to get millimeter precision. These are all fine, perfect instruments. They're all kept 
ready and we also have a spare one so in case there's a need for any of this we can always fall back on those instruments and do the work last thing about jaw surgery i keep repeating it is carless procedure because it's all done from inside the mouth and the father of this kind of surgery was a Swiss surgeon, Obvi Gezer. And so the whole concept of moving the different parts of the facial skeleton, especially the upper, the lower jaw, the malar bones, or the cheekbones, the chin, everything from inside the mouth really gives, I think it's the most important facial aesthetic procedure out there. It's just not being done as much because obviously, as you can see, it requires equipment, it requires training, it requires expertise, it requires a team. So I have, you got to have all of this and then, you know, a lot of experience as well. So that's the reason. But honestly, like I keep telling a lot of my patients, a genioplasty with jaw sculpting, when you bring the chin forward, it's like a reverse facelift. So it stretches your skin and that's going to last longer couple of decades maybe 15 years maybe so this is the whole concept this is the bottom line of jaw surgery originally when it was started it was started to correct mal formation jaws or malformed jaws or we call it deformed jaws when patients not able to chew when it's like a major deformity but you know these are used a lot now for cosmetic surgery when you move the jaws, when you move them subtly, when you move it by a millimeter, when you take it off a millimeter, and that gives permanent, excellent, satisfactory results. So I hope this was a useful video. If you still have any more doubts regarding how instrumentation can help us or anything to do with jaw surgery, please ask us on our YouTube channel. We will be definitely replying. Thank you.